the tire tag. We love the opportunity to uh, get feedback, and this is my 84th million cups. Four years ago, I sat in a million cups just like you are today, and I was listening to two presenters, and at the end of it, I looked around the room and I thought, you know, it's funny, it's a room full of what I call five percenters. They're entrepreneurs, they're people that um, look outside that box, they don't even have a box. And so I thought, I love getting to be in this crowd and to be in this environment. So I actually, a few weeks later, I approached an engineer and come up with a new, di a new idea that's called Gorilla Signs. And Gorilla Signs was my first invention. Uh, Gorilla Signs has been very successful and been a great product. Uh, that's where I went to the first 80 a million cups to <laughs> promote that actual product. Um, but I was at uh, about my 58 million cups and uh, three um, uh, individuals that were former, uh, there's no such thing as former, but they were um, uh, Marines and they brought me an idea and said, you know, we, we don't want to fix the idea, but we know there's a problem. And I said, what's the problem? And they said, parking violations. Parking violations is an epidemic problem across the United States. Well, I, my ears went up as an entrepreneur. I thought, hmm, problem, figure out how to solve it, could make some money. Cool to solve problems too. So they said, yes, that 90, about 96% of all the parking spaces in the United States are not policed. 4% are by municipalities. Now here's the interesting statistic. That 4%, the only 4% that's policed, happens to generate the majority of revenues for most municipalities across the United States. So what does that tell you? Transfer, that means a lot of money there. It's a legal right to be able to slap the hands of somebody who's parked illegally and say, you owe a fine. Well, the federal government and states and cities say yes, you can, but here's the problem. The other uh, 90 some odd percent of the parking spaces have no way to enforce it. They have, that, it's interesting because they have an actual obligation to enforce the parking on parking lots, but they don't actually have any way to do it. You put a ticket on the, on the windshield, what's the average person gonna do? They're gonna wad it up and throw it away. In fact, statistically, about 80% are gonna, eight out of 10 people are just gonna wad the ticket up and throw it away. 20% will pay it because they are really people who go by the rules. So most parking lots just don't fool with it. The next alternative is somebody parks where they shouldn't, Guess what they do? They tow it off, which is pretty extreme. I don't know if anybody's ever walked out to their car and seen it towed off, but th they did because one of these signs was out in front of that building. They either parked in a fire zone, no parking zone, or handicap or reserve. And let me tell you, in the state of Texas, uh, you can go up to $500 for parking in a handicap spot. So they, they can really knock it, sock it to you. But rightfully so, because if you ever had a family member who's handicapped, uh, it's I mean, there's a reason why they get to park it up front. Um, so basically what we do is we, we figured out a way that, that um, to empower the applicators or the patrols of the area that they can apply what's called a tire tag. It's a tag. As opposed to putting it on the windshield, we thought, well, we better put something on the car that the person can't easily get off. Well, there is some other devices that are on the market. The problem with the other devices that are on the market is they make the car where it can't move. So the problem with that is there's a high liability. If my son just got hurt and I got rushed to the hospital and I come to my car and I find out I can't move it, I'm mad. Besides, I'm worried about my son. Or maybe somebody's bleeding to death or God forbid, whatever it might be, you get the point. It, it, it becomes a real high liability. So it's really, I can see, I began to see real quickly, this is a major problem. So the tire tag was basically a reverse engineered design of, of solving this problem. So now, the applicator goes to his cell phone, to an app, which is the tire tag app, and they're able to input the information necessary, which is the license plate, and they put in some basic information into their, into their phone, and then they go and put this, this, this device on the wheel of a car. This is the device right here, it's simple. Many, it looks like a bicycle lock. Well, it kind of is. This is a Harley Davidson lock uh, made by one of the largest lock companies, in fact, the largest lock, lock company in the world. And this is as uh, simple as just take this off, slip it through the wheel of the vehicle, not around the tire, just the wheel, and lock it, and it hangs right there off the wheel. You've been tagged. That's the whole idea. At that point, when the consumer walks out to the car, we also put a sticker on the, on the driver's window so they know they've been tagged. 
when the driver, driver walks out of the car, they see the sticker, they say, gosh, I owe, I've got to pay to get this off my car. I could drive with it on my car, but it's going to make a little noise. It's going to be a little annoying, but it's not going to endanger me to drive the car. Just don't want it on there. So at that point, we know that the majority, because we tested this, will we'll pay it. Simply by going to their cell phone, pay with their credit card, and they drop it in the drop box as they leave. They're given a four-digit code. The four-digit code, they simply put the code into the device, slip it off their car, and they can put it into the drop box as they leave. So on their credit card, they are billed a $60 deposit for the device. So if they don't return the device, they're going to pay $60 for it, which covers the cost of our device. Average ticket in Texas, as an example, is about $125 to $130 ticket. So we'll say at $100, um, it adds up pretty quick as a revenue stream for a potential lot owner. Here you can see it on the wheel. Here's it on the decal on the sticker, on the sticker on the window. Um, so we basically have a tire tag enforcement agreement. We have a tire tag ID. Uh, submission form, and we also have a tire tag user ID submission form. We all, these are all uh, the forms that's necessary to run the company and run the business, and they're pretty self-explanatory. This is a good picture of the, of the device itself, and this is on the back side of the device. It has the phone number call in, and so on and so forth. You can see as you walk up to the car, you're going to plainly see the sticker, and you're going to be able to look right there because it's always on the same tire, back left tire, you can see that you've been tagged. Again, it doesn't immobilize the device. It doesn't make it to where it can't move. Uh, basically, it just, it just restricts it from... Uh, now we lost the video. That's okay. Uh, basically, it just restricts it from um, being able to easily take it off without the four-digit code. Uh, the revenue stream off of this device for uh, the, the applicator is, is crazy numbers. Um, for the average lot say of a thousand cars a day that goes through a lot, uh, say here in Sherman. There's a number of places here in town that would have a thousand cars a day that would, you know, Walmart, as an example, has easily a thousand cars a day that go through that shopping uh, center there. So those thousand cars a day, on national average, is about seven to eight violations every hour happen, believe it or not, in front of, in front of the uh, fire zone or handicap or something. So um, you can see that the revenue stream can be very high. Based on that, if only two violations, if we, if we figured only two minimal number happen per hour, the revenue stream on that lot average in the state of Texas is well over $650,000 gross. So you can see that the, the revenue stream's there. An independent contractor with us is what we're after today. An independent contractor can earn as much as $45,000 a year on that one lot just by managing it. That doesn't mean putting the applications on. Security companies do that, and management companies do that. So that's basically our business model, so open for questions.